lives in peace neath the willow tree. Sexual harassment, panda. Who explains sexual harassment to you and me? Sexual harassment, panda. Don't say that, don't touch there. Don't be nasty, says the silly old bear. We've come to teach you what's right and wrong. Sexual harassment, panda. So, as you might have guessed, this is going to be a follow-up to my previous video regarding sexual harassment in sceptical meetups. Now, I've done quite a bit of research now, uh, though, of course, I can't have looked at everything. I just looked at what seemed to be the most relevant, what was coming up top in searches, and uh, trying to gather as much information as I could. But, of course, I couldn't have looked at everything. If you have any links which may change my mind, please, by all means, go ahead and share them with me, or make a video response. However, after doing the research which I've done, and for, if anything, my point of view has actually strengthened. Um, I will be mentioning, mentioning Watson again in this video, but I'm mainly going to be uh, dealing with, uh, PC, uh, with PC Myers, uh, Bossman103 a little bit, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, Thunderfoot's video, and some of the things which I've seen in various forums and various blogs um, regarding the amazing meetup. So, first off then, um, I'll just get into why I have a dislike for Watson and going over a few of some of my, a few of the uh, a few more problems I had with the elevator gate situation and or deal with some of the criticisms which I received on my previous video. So, um, I think that basically Watson is becoming increasingly more radical in her viewpoint. There was a time when some when some of her videos regarding feminism were pretty good. There was a video talking about how atheists and feminists should work together on some issues, such as female circumcision and the killing of suspected uh, witches in various countries, and that, and that kind of thing. And yeah, I think you'd have to be pretty crazy to disagree with her on that issue. However, lately she is becoming more and more radical. I saw some uh, I saw some comments from her basically completely dismissing the men's rights movement out of hand, insinuating that there's no validity to it whatsoever, and that basically women are the only ones which are oppressed. And even if men were the ones who were being oppressed, then feminism's the answer to that. Well, okay, uh, yeah, when feminism decides to, uh, uh, decides to, as a whole, address the fact that men face the majority of nearly every form of violence, including rape, if you count prison rape, men working more hours, accounting for over 90% of workplace deaths, yet women spending the majority of disposable income, discrimination in the family, uh, in the family court system, men being assumed to be violent or sexual predators for, um, on no evidence a lot of the time, men facing harsher punishments for the same crimes, genital mutilation of baby boys being legal, men being less likely to report uh, rape or violence against them because of pressure from men and women which make them unable to show any signs of weakness, prostate cancer receiving a fraction of the funding that breast cancer does even though it's just as deadly, men accounting for the majority of prisoners, homeless people, mental patients and suicides. Um, when feminism as a whole decides to address those issues, then fine, the men's rights movement will be obsolete. But at the moment, that's not happening. Okay, so on to the elevator gate situation. If she simply said that the guy's approach was extremely poor, then offered some advice as to how he could have handled it better, and possibly had more luck, I'd have simply agreed with her and thumbed her video up. But to tell people, just don't do it, telling men, and she did single out men, where and when they are and, are, are and aren't allowed to, to ask out a woman, that's trying to police people's behaviour. Furthermore, she doesn't speak for all women. Some women do respond positively in situations like that, though generally not to a guy of so little game. But that's creep shaming. To shame a man who, in reality, hasn't done anything wrong apart from being socially awkward, yeah, I think that's um, creep shaming. I'm sure she'd disagree with slut-shaming a woman who did decide to sleep with a man in that situation, so it's wrong to attack someone from the other side as well. She made a follow-up video which I thought was pretty poor. She didn't address any of the uh, valid criticisms, such as the fact that she couldn't decide whether she'd never seen him before in her life, or whether she told him she was tired and, need and needed to sleep. 
and this kind of leads me to believe that she made the whole thing up as an excuse to attack men. She certainly seems capable of this, if the centre next to link down below is anything to go by. Now, before I get into um, addressing what PC Myers was saying, which I think is quite ridiculous, I'd just like to just go over one quick point which Bossman raised in his video, saying that uh, Thunderfoot should have asked for consent before biting that woman's leg. Now, I hate to have to agree with uh, Thunderfoot here, and clearly, okay, as much as I may think that Thunderfoot's a bit of a dick, he isn't some sort of monster who's going to try and chew someone's leg off. So, no, not asking her permission before biting her leg isn't assault. I'm sure he didn't take a chunk out of it, and it's certainly not sexual assault. It wasn't done in any sexual um, sexual area. You wouldn't um, call it sexual assault if a gay person did that to you, or a straight person, uh, or a straight person did that to you, or if a woman did that to another woman. Now. Somehow, I really doubt that she was a complete stranger before he did that. I don't think that he would have just dived onto a complete straight, um, complete stranger in that manner. I'm sure they were friends. And I mean, telling you that you have to ask for permission to do something spontaneous like that is kind of ridiculous among people who clearly know each other. Uh, so you expect him to be like, "Excuse me, um, can I?" Uh, ask your permission to do something spontaneous. No, that's ridiculous. And yeah, trying to enforce those kind of those kind of rules is being a bit of a killjoy. I do agree with Thunderfoot on that point. I'm not going to address uh, the rest of Thunderfoot's video. I do have minor disagreements with him here and there, but uh, this video is going to be long enough as it is. So I'd like to talk about some of the points which PC Myers raised in one of his uh, blog posts on uh, Free Thought Blogs, um, which of course I'm going to link below. It's the misogynists can think women are tasty while not recognising that they are human beings. Bullshit. So he says, it's okay f um, to hit on women there. It's okay if, um, if you abuse women in a bar. Bars are free range markets for men to exercise their will. Clearly trying to be sarcastic and complete, making a ridiculous argument which no sane person it actually holds. I'm saying yes, it's okay for a man to hit on a woman until she shows a sign, a sign of discomfort comfort, or tells him that she's not interested. I also say that a woman can has the same uh, can approach a man in exactly the same manner, or a woman to a woman, or a man to a man. It's up to the person who's being approached to tell the other person they're not interested because they are adults and not to be treated like fucking children. And it's the thing where men are to exercise their will. Is he saying that women don't have will, that women have no agency, that they are effectively children? Um, because that's what it sounds like. A lot of the things PC Myers says come out as really quite misogynistic, as... Um, a few, as a few of the feminists I know have noticed with people who, um, with uh, radfem men, and I am beginning to see him as a bit of a radfem. Uh, next comment I'd like to address. But here's the thing, the instances of harassment are rare and usually, not always, effectively dealt with. But there's a massive culture of internet bravos who want to diminish and demean the concerns. There's an attitude that women are there not as colleagues and, and respected partners in the goals of the movement, but as eye candy and sex toys. So please, please, don't you dare suppress my right to hit on women all I want. Um, well, no, I'm saying when people, people can approach a woman, and then if the woman shows they're not interested, they should walk away. I'm not uh, advocating that they carry on doing it after they've been told no, because that would be harassment. Whereas, you know, you're, a lot of the people who are against me on this seem to be trying to tell people that they're not allowed to do it full stop, which is not harassment. You're, um, that's uh, basically trying to, um, <laughs> trying to prohibit their freedom of expression. 
So next I'm going to talk, I'm going to read some of the writing which uh, Zom gets did on the subject, which is also on the uh, Free Thoughts blog. Uh, so first of all, she gives the dictionary de definitions of uh, harassment and unwelcome sexual advances. So harassment, um, the act or, of systematic and or continued unwanted and annoying actions on one party or a group, including threats and demands. Unwelcomed sexual advances. Request for sexual favours and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nat nature constitutes sexual harassment when submission to such conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment. Submission to and or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as the basis for employment de um, decisions affecting such individuals or such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with the individual's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile or offensive working environment. Though, of course, in that situation, we can, we can substitute working environment with uh, social environment. <coughs> now, Zomgitz gives an example of what could be considered as uh, sexual harassment in her blog as well, which uh, she experienced at one of the meetups. On one of these late nights at this specific bar, I was having a drink with the very awesome AJ Johnson when a young woman approached AJ and started making sexually, sexually charged compliments. She and her boyfriend were apparently looking for a threesome. She was the one doing all the talking, the boyfriend was sitting in the corner looking too drunk to talk, or too high, or both, or maybe having some, men, um, having some mental disability. He just looked completely out of it. The young woman was noticeably intoxicated too. AJ had to literally get up and leave in order to get away from her. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately for AJ, the young woman uh, didn't, follow, uh, didn't follow her. Unfortunately for me, I became the replacement focus for her attention. She was very sexually explicit in her language, very persistent and not very coherent. I was very uncomfortable. After enduring a few minutes of drunken babble about how awesome a threesome would be, I got up and left too. Uh, in brackets, I forgot to say that AJ and myself sitting um, were sitting at that table when she approached us. I mentioned this incident to a few of my friends that night, but it never even crossed my mind to report him to the TAM staff uh, um, as sexual harassment. Nobody else suggested um, this either at the time. Um, so, of course, I'm going to leave a link to that below. And that's two examples of sexual harassment from women um, towards men, which seems to counter Maya's po um, point of view that, you know, this is a problem that um, a problem with men, um, men against women. OK, so next I'm going to read a few things from uh, the Facebook group about the uh, TAM meetup. So first off, uh, Elisa uh, Sutake, or Sutaki, or whatever it is, I agree that it doesn't exactly fit, but it's needed. I don't want to really go back to TAM due to its culture of smart, driven, opinionated, righteous, unsocialized, predominantly male, unchecked, and en masse in Vegas. Uh, um, as individuals, I think most are fine people, but goddamn, they're icky as a group, mostly due to the copious amounts of alcohol. They crossed a lot of lines rather pathetically, but still, and could use some social education. Uh, she comments, uh, she leaves another comment. I think if you propose this more as a why aren't there more female skeptics at TAM panel to view the social dynamic, the influences of traditional gen gender stereotypes, harassment and exclusion pra uh, practices, and group so uh, sociology would be more um, would be a more clinical examination as well as more likely to suit a TAM panel. Um, I kind of agree with that um, second um, that second comment. Um, as for the first, I mean, that's really quite, that's an extremely subjective opinion. What some people will view as people being extremely crass and, um, and vulgar, other people clearly view as them having a good time. What would suit her, other people may well view that as extremely boring. Um, it's very difficult to exactly know without, without being there, though. Um, on to the next comment, uh, DJ Growth. 
um, I think that's his name. Yeah, DJ Growth, it's spelled a little bit weirdly. Um, yeah, he said last year 40% of the attendees were women. Now, considering last time I checked it was 25% of the population were atheists, women seem to actually have been overrepresented at that meetup. Um, uh, there may have been uh, wives of husbands going there as well, or something like that, which um, possibly, but still 40% is an over-representation -rep of women um, compared with the population who are atheists and skeptics. Um, okay, next comment. Social, um, uh, Sophie uh, Hirschfield um, responds to DJ Grove. I imagine the numbers have improved uh, because of recent outreach um, efforts, but I think that um, I think that ind indicates we could um, we should continue to reach out. Well, if it's 40% and it's an overrepresentation, then um, you don't want to be looking at getting more more women at the uh, um, more women at the meetup. You want to be looking at encouraging more women into atheism in order to actually get a more um, a more equal representation uh, this that's taking a top-down approach rather than a bottom-up approach which is what you really need to do um heather henderson i think the whole um the whole damn thing has been blown out of proportion are we adults here or children um yeah i agree with that i agree with that statement uh travis roy ben um, sexual harassment and assault should, of course, be reported to the police. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there are cases when I think there's there is such a thing as dickish behaviour, which isn't criminal behaviour, where, you know, they could be removed from the, um, the conference. But, yeah, in general, I would um, agree with what he's saying, um, agree with what he's saying there. Um, I think that's a very valid uh, opinion solution. I'm not sure why people expect more than that really. Someone else, I think, posted that, but I didn't uh, write down their name. Um, Heather Anderson again. And I didn't say that people involved are being child, um, childish for being concerned. I meant in general, aren't we all adults here? And do we really need to be concerned about sexual harassment at a skeptic convention? These things can be handled on an individual basis depending on the circumstance. And yeah, I think that should be the case, just as it is nearly everywhere else. I think that the cape, um, that the possibility of uh, sexual harassment is being blown way out of proportion, and I think I've got some pretty good indications that that's the case later on. Um, is it true that harassment issues are much discussed in some quarters of the sceptic and atheist and other allied movements? All gen um, generally for uh, the better, to the extent that emotionally charged issues are tempered with evidence. But to my knowledge, there has never been a reported f um, filed for sexual harassment at TAM, and there have been zero reports of harassment at the, um, at the TAMs we've put on while I've um, while I've been at JREF. Of course, that um, doesn't mean su um, that doesn't mean such didn't happen. But of 800 responses to our attendee survey last year, only three people said they are made to feel unwelcome by someone at the event. One, a man who didn't like all the magic. Two, a woman who was ridiculed for her veganism. And three, a conservative who didn't feel welcome because of what he saw as an undue emphasis by speakers and attendees on progressive and leftist ideals. Uh, in brackets, one woman at the event did, however, complain to the staff that she felt she may be harassed by someone in the future and felt uncomfortable about um, about the man. And while we're concerned about such uh, concerns, she didn't complain about any actual activity that had happened at, uh, that had happened at the hotel, or security, or law enforcement, or other um, or others could have taken action on. I believe I understand the impulse to protect people from harm. This is a strong motivation for skeptics, after all. But telling newbies that they should be on guard against so-called sexual predators at events, or that the movement or movements are unsafe for women, 
uh, may be a surefire way of making some women feel unwelcome who would, um, otherwise feel and be completely safe and welcomed. As for policies, I think Ben is on the right track. We're all against harassment or bullying of any kind, sexual or otherwise. Any instance of harassment or assaults should immediately be reported to security and law enforcement and GRAF staff and the hotel staff stand ready to assist should any uh, regrettable accident ever occur. God forbid. But again, no such incident has ever occurred at TAM to my knowledge and I believe that bears mentioning in current discussions about how prevalent are the unnamed sexual predators at various atheist and sceptical events. Last year we had 40% women attendees, something I'm really happy about, but this year only 18% of TAM registrants so far are women, a significant and alarming decrease, and judging from dozens of emails we've had um, received from women on our, on our lists, this may be due to messaging that some women receive from various quarters that going to TAM or other similar conferences means that they will be accosted or harassed. This is misinformation. Again, there have been um, on reports of such harassment in the last two TAMs where I've been at the GRIF, nor any reports filed with authorities at any other TAMs of which I'm aware. We have uh, gotten emails over the last few months from women vowing never to attend TAM because they've heard GREF is uh, purported to condone child sex trafficking and emails in response to various blog posts about GREF or me that seem to suggest I or others at the GREF promote objectification of women or that we condone violence or threats of violence against women or they believe women would be unsafe because we feature this or that man on the programme. I think this misinformation comes from irresponsible messaging coming from a small number of prominent and well-meaning uh, women sceptics who, in trying to help uh, correct real problems of sexism and scepticism, um, actually, or rather clumsily, help themselves create a climate where women, who otherwise wouldn't, end up feeling unwelcome and unsafe, and I find this unfortunate. Two more comments then, uh, no, one more comment by Richard Roy in response to Sophie. Are there any studies on similar things? How effective are, um, how effective are they? Do sexual harassment classes um, people are forced to take at work really lower the cases of sexual harassment? Um, if this is the case, should part of day one be a giant sexual harassment course? Should it be a pamphlet handed out to you? Um, handed out and you sign off and read it. Are people uh, that sexually harass others uh, going to follow these guidelines? Uh, I'm sorry for um, speaking a bit, um, I'm sorry for the poor grammar and stuff in some of those posts. That's not me, that's how, the, that's how they were written and it made it kind of hard to read. But, I mean, those last few comments really do sum up what I was trying to say in the previous video. From what I've seen, the sexual harassment cl um, classes and that kind of thing aren't very effective. Um, it's To me, it seems like trying to promote absence-only education. It's just not going, it's just not going to work. And, um, you know, I, um, I think that the, um, the thing showing about how the attendance has dropped among women and how there's actually very, very little sexual harassment going in there, from what I can see, really kind of shows why um you know why i was angry and made th and made that video i think that the, um, the people who are on the other side to me are actually making the situation a lot worse they're the ones who are turning women away from this thing even though they're not really at any real risk um i did hear about one other potential uh, sexual harassment course um i forgot to get the link but there was apparently a guy who was going around trying to kiss people so, you know, if we look at the four cases which I've seen, um, uh, you know, the elevator gate, uh, the uh, guy who was going around kissing people, and the woman who tried it on with uh, AJ and Zongit, we're going to discard elevator gate because that's not harassment. She should have just turned him down, and that should have been end of fucking story. Um, that puts uh, two-thirds of the cases of sexual harassment. Um being caused by women and you know that kind of um, you know that shows that it's not this big problem of men harassing uh men harassing women but um you know men 
don't in this in the skeptical community don't seem to be more rapey than women i suppose um i could i could say it um so you know when you get pc myers talking about you know how, how men just want to be able to um men just want to be able to impose their will on uh, women and all of that fucking crap you know that, that his arguments just aren't holding water when we're looking at reality in this case so i mean um hopefully that's uh cleared things uh, cleared things up a little bit you know i think that the people who are on the other side to me seem to be causing um causing more damage if anything that you know making women feel unsafe when that's pretty much unwarranted um so i'm going to deal with some of the comments i got uh, next then first i'll be dealing the one for uh, dealing with some comments from the anhedonic angel so um Anhedonic Angel and uh, Integral Math had quite a debate in the comment section. Um, she was saying that she'd personally tell the guy to fuck off and that he isn't respecting her and stuff. Um, I don't see this as necessarily being um, the case. He's, um, the, you know, the guy isn't going to be psychic. She talks about um, objectification. Uh, my stance on objectification is that the way that uh, the concept is usually portrayed I think is complete bullshit. There is what I would consider to be genuine um, objectification. For example, if I um, if I hired you to um, wear a bikini and hand out flyers when you when you're a better speaker than other people there, if I was organising the event, then yeah, that would be objectification. But wanting to have sex with someone, I don't um, I don't think um, is. Uh, just because you want to have sex with someone doesn't mean that you disregard everything else about them. At least I don't, um, and I'm sure there may be guys who may be guys who do, but you shouldn't. But I don't think that you should be jumping to that conclusion. Um, just to, um, I mean, that would be just um, that's just the same as them uh, jumping to the conclusion that you may possibly want to have sex with them. Um, and, you know, to the people who think that I'm holding a misogynistic stance, no, you know, I hold exactly the same stance um, for um, for heterosexuals, lesbians, or um, or gay people, or you know, women asking out men. It doesn't fucking matter. They're all, all adults. The person and the person who's being propositioned has the right and the responsibility to uh, to say no. If they persist afterwards, then yes, that's harassment. But if they don't, then I think they're well within their rights to do it, and I don't think we should be putting in policies in order to prevent people um, from doing this, when the evidence seems to suggest that there really doesn't seem to be much um, harassment happening at this event at all. Another comment I got was basically saying that, uh, well, Rebecca Watson did have the right to be offended, um, that was in reference to me saying that she doesn't have the right to not be offended. And I know a few other people um, took what I said the wrong way there or didn't quite understand what I was trying to say. That was basically a reworking of the uh, quite famous uh, phrase that you don't have a right to not be offended. Meaning that uh, just because you're offended by something someone says doesn't mean you have the right to restrict their freedom of speech. So, I mean, that was basically what I was saying there, is that, um, you know, um, she can feel offended all she wants if someone, are, if someone uh, tries to, um, if someone tries to approach her, um, but as long as they don't um, continue to harass her after she's expressed uh, disinterest, then um, she has no right to uh, complain or to try to prevent them from, or try to prevent other people from taking that same course of action. 